Hi, I'm Gemma and I'm no wine expert, but if like me you enjoy the occasional glass of wine, I've discovered something I'd like to share with you that I think you'll find really interesting. Here I have one of my favourite reds that I'm serving typically at room temperature. And here I have another glass, but I'll come back to that in a minute. I just want to take a moment to think about that phrase, room temperature. Most people's homes are generally at a very comfortable 22 degrees centigrade. But there's this common misconception that red wine should be served at room temperature. However, just take a look at the label on this bottle. All wines have a different serving temperature, and this one clearly recommends 15 degrees centigrade. So when we serve red wine at room temperature, the reality is that there's probably a big difference between the recommended serving temperature and how we're actually serving it. So what happens when we serve a red wine that's too warm? Well, like I said, I'm no expert, but I generally find a warm red to be drinkable, but it's a long way from its best. It's a thick tasting and it has an aroma of jam and there's a real taste of alcohol that's quite harsh, to be honest. It sort of overwhelms the palate. The winemaker has said that we should serve this wine at 15 degrees centigrade, but I've blissfully ignored that in favour of the standard room temperature myth. Why? Maybe because it's not actually that easy to serve wine at the correct temperature. Let me come back to this other glass. This is the same wine. But now served at 15 as it should be. Mm. I wish I could share this with you. That thickness and the jammy smell of gone and I've now got this really nice fruity tight aroma. The taste has lost its alcohol harshness and to be honest it's simply better. I think the only way I can describe the difference is that this glass tastes as though it comes from a more expensive bottle and yet they're exactly the same. But it's not really a surprise because the winemaker told us the serving temperature that it should be. Clearly there's a good reason for that. And that's because the temperature has a huge bearing on how the wine tastes. Obviously, at home, we chill things in the refrigerator, which operates at around five degrees, because that's a safe temperature to store food. But it's far too cold for most wines, even the lightest white wines. So how do we know how long to chill our wine so that it can be served at its best? Did you notice this transmitter clip on the wine bottle that I took out of the refrigerator a moment ago? This transmits the temperature of the wine from inside the refrigerator to a receiver display that sits on the front of the refrigerator or on your countertop. If your wine is too warm, then the red backlight will glow, suggesting that you need to chill the bottle. Put the bottle in the refrigerator and leave it until the display has just turned blue, which means it's just under the ideal temperature. Take the bottle out of the fridge and as the temperature starts to rise, the display will turn green, which means it's now in the optimum serving temperature zone. It's as simple as that. And of course, if the display turns red again, back in the fridge it goes. Now I've been using one of my favourite red wines to demonstrate the Kelvin Duo today, but temperature is just as important for whites, rosés and sparkling wines. In fact, the world's favourite white wine should be served at 13 degrees centigrade, while most of us are serving it at 5 degrees centigrade straight out of the fridge. Well, we now know that serving wine at the right temperature is key to having wine taste as the winemaker intended. Once you've tasted wine at its optimum, you'll never settle for the wrong temperature again.